I do think that they are going to be able to use the presidency to dramatically enrich themselves in a way that we've never seen before. And you know, part of this starts from the fact that for the first time in 40 years, Trump uh, was, was the first candidate in 40 years not to show us his tax returns. And I'm pretty certain that we're never going to see those tax returns, um, not just because uh, they might reveal that he's not as wealthy as he says he is, uh, but because what they would certainly reveal is the web of connections that could pose serious conflict of interest problems for him as president. So he said that uh, he was just going to turn his business over to his uh, three grown children, and then they would run it on his behalf, uh, and he wouldn't talk to them about it or pay any attention to it until he was no longer the president. But it's important to understand that even if that were true, which you may or may not believe, that he's actually not going to talk to them about what the business is doing, they're still uh, going to be putting money in his pocket whenever the business makes a profit. And so you know, the scenario that I, that I imagined in that piece um, is one that, that I think is, is perfectly reasonable. And you have to understand that, that these days, the Trump Corporation doesn't really do very much building. He actually uh, is in the business of brand licensing which is very lucrative for him, uh, and it's actually pretty clever. The way it works is he will go to uh, some developer somewhere, you know, say in Malaysia or something, um, and say, all right, you're building a, a hotel or a resort, and I will let you slap the Trump name on it, and it can be called the, you know, the Trump Kuala Lumpur or whatever it is, and then for that, you'll pay me a couple of million dollars a year. It's very smart because Trump doesn't take any risk when he does that. Uh, it, the risk is assumed by that local person, and he just gets the license. Fees. But now imagine Donald Trump is the president of the United States, the most powerful person on earth, and his children go to that developer um, and say, hey, you know, why don't you uh, put the Trump name on your hotel? And that developer, let's say that that developer has close ties to the government, you know, maybe not in Malaysia and anywhere. It could be, could be in Russia, could be anywhere. Uh, and, and perhaps that, you know, that developer has those ties. And then you could imagine how the, uh, the dictator of some country could tell that person, you know, why don't you give them very, very favorable terms? Instead of paying them $2 million a year, maybe we'll pay them $20 million a year. And all of a sudden you now have a situation where, you know, some foreign government is directly putting money into the bank account of the president of the United States. And that opens up all kinds of uh, really frightening prospects. And they could be doing this all over the world. And so we'll never know about it either. That's the thing. It's a private corporation. They don't have to tell us. I would fully expect that if, if they entered into those deals that he would know about it. And he would know that the government of some country or people acting on behalf of the government had given him a lot of money. And is that going to then affect the decisions that he makes when, when there's some sort of foreign policy issue that comes up with that country? Uh, you know, it would be hard for it not to. And so much of this is going to be opaque. You could certainly imagine a scenario where uh, with his children, uh, who are his very close advisors, he is sharing all kinds of information that affects the intersection of his business interests and the, uh, the interests of the United States government. And it's looking now like his son-in-law, uh, Jared Kushner, who is Ivanka's husband, um, is perhaps his closest advisor. And, you know, there are, you could certainly see how the things that he learns when he's doing things like sitting in intelligence briefings could then be uh, shared with his wife when he goes home at night, and that could end up being very beneficial to the Trump Corporation. Um, I guess that, that you can say the kids are not going to have any kind of involvement in in what the government does, and that's sort of the, the most basic level of separation that you would expect. But, you know, he's not willing to do that, uh, maybe because, you know, this is how he has operated. He's brought them into his business uh, as soon as they were old enough, uh, and they are his partners, and they're going to continue to be his partners um, as he runs the government. Um, you know, I think it would be much more appropriate for him to basically do what, uh, what other people have done uh, in the presidency, which is to you know, do what they can to make sure that their, that their family members are not you know, not benefiting from what the government does and not uh, and not having too much influence over what the government does. On Thursday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe became the first world leader to have a formal meeting with the president-elect. However, it appears that Donald Trump wasn't the only Trump in the meeting. His oldest daughter, Ivanka Trump, sat in on her father's meeting.